Something bad happened to your hard drive and now it's showing up blank. Well, let's take a look at that situation and see if we can't recover from it before sending the drive off to experts. Okay, so if you have really important data, you should back it up. And you should back it up on a system other than your main system. You should probably back it up to network attached storage. You probably should back it up to network attached storage that also has a removable USB hard drive or mirrors the data to say Amazon S3 for a negligible charge. But if you have a drive that has died and is now showing up blank, or it's making a scary grinding sound, but you can still see some of the information on it, then I want to show you two utilities on Linux that may be able to save your bacon. The first is test disk, which will recover uh, from situations where it's basically user error or some sort of weird problem where it's the disk has been blanked really quickly. The other utility that I want to show you is DD Rescue. Now DD Rescue is a little different than the DD utility on Linux. And so let's talk a, a little bit about the situations which you would use these utilities. Basically, nine times out of 10, unless you can hear the hard drive making strange noises, or your whole system hangs, like you'll go to copy a file off of your hard drive and your whole system hangs or sticks for a second. Those are signs of hardware problems. And in, in the case where you've got hardware problems, you probably should start with DD Rescue. DD Rescue will let you, is a utility on Linux that will let you recover information from a possibly dying or a hard drive with mechanical problems to another drive uh, that you can back up the information to. And then once you get the information off of there, then you can work on repairing. It's a very bad idea to try to repair a drive that is failing. You almost always don't want to poke at it. It's like a badger. When you poke at it, it's going to get angry and then it's just gonna shut down and then the drive's not gonna show up in the system anymore. It's gonna be bad news. And your only option if you have to get data off of that is to send it off to a lab where they're gonna try to do fancy things in the lab and just crazy stuff to try to read the information off of the drive. That's not good, that's a bad situation. The other type of failure is when you have a situation where the drive has been blanked, either by an accidental format or a virus or something like your computer was hit by lightning and it, it turned off the wrong way and then all of a sudden your information is gone, like you boot up and it's like, well, the hard drive's here, but it's just showing is blank. It's a fairly common problem. There's a, on the enterprise channel, uh, there's a video about recovering from that situation where sometimes there's a certain kind of Dell RAID controller or LSI RAID controller that Dell badged or HP badged where it something weird happens, there's a bug, it crashes, and then all of a sudden your disks are blank. That little thing when it does that is very bad because it not only wipes out the start of the disk in the partition table, it also wipes out the beginning of the partition and so test disk by itself is not actually enough to recover from that situation. If you wanna recover from that specific situation, then I suggest you watch the video about you know, file system recovery on the enterprise channel, which is a little more in depth than this video. These are sort of higher level tools. That are, these, are, these are like the 200 level tools for diagnosing and troubleshooting the situation. That said, DD Rescue is like the utility DD on Linux. If you've never heard of DD, DD is a, a very low level utility that basically just copies data from one place to another. It can copy data from device to device or from file to device or from device to file. You've got a lot of options. Linux and Unixes in general, including Mac OS and, and BSD and other Unixes, treat uh, block devices, block devices being like a hard drive, an SSD, CD-ROM, anything like that, in terms of the way that block devices work, work a lot like a file. This is a really convenient way of dealing directly with the hardware. When you need to do stuff that sort of colors outside the lines a little bit with hardware, it is nice to be able to get raw access to your hardware. So what the utility DD on Linux, you sometimes see, it's like, oh, in order to write this image to a USB stick to produce a bootable USB stick, you download this image and then you DD and then in file IF equal and then the image file and then OF equal the file path of the USB device that you want to write to. You got to be careful because DD is insanely dangerous. It is a utility that will do exactly what you tell it to do. And so if you get the wrong drive or the wrong file, when you use DD, it's going to overwrite the wrong device. And then there's there's not really much you can do from that recovery. Uh, if you did accidentally do the wrong thing with DD and you immediately aborted the command, even the stuff that I'm gonna show you here today probably wouldn't let you recover from that situation uh, easily because you in that one or two or three seconds, you would have already overwritten the first several hundred megabytes of your disk. Unless you have two partitions, 
And the second partition is what's called an extended partition. Um, the stuff on your first partition is probably lost or mostly lost. It's a pretty, it's a pretty damaging situation. So this is not really for dealing with that situation. Although if you have that situation, maybe head over to the forums and uh, maybe we can figure that out. But that's real painful to deal with. So uh, test disk really just looks for situations where that first 512 bytes, something bad has happened to the first 512 bytes. There's usually something still there to go on, um, but it's not a situation where there's like serious damage to the first few hundred megabytes of the disk, like from accidentally doing something wrong with DB. So first you would run, if you're sure it's not a hardware problem or reasonably sure it's not a hardware problem, you can run test disk, you run through the options in test disk, you get some, you, you know, you, these options are basically pretty straightforward, just like this and this, and then it's like, oh, here's the partition tables. Even though this is showing up as a blank disk, if we look here, we run F disk, F disk is showing that this is a blank disk, but we can run test disk and test disk is saying, oh no, here are all the partitions here. So if you restore this, and then try to mount these file systems and then you still get an error, there's a good chance that there's some other underlying damage. Now test disk can also repair the MFT on NTFS and NTF, uh, MFT on NTFS is like the file allocation table and it stores where all of the files are on the system and, and in, important information about the file system itself and how it's organized. There are multiple copies of that on an NTFS disk. Sometimes the first one is damaged and a lot of the time, things that mount NTFS don't really look past the first one. And so test disk can actually look past the first one, see if there's a, there's a good one, and then restore the good one over top of the bad one. And then you're up and running again, and that's a good situation. So test disk is a cool utility for dealing with situations like that. Now DD Rescue, on the other hand, is more for dealing with hardware problems and, and sort of a hardware situation. DD Rescue has a little bit different syntax to it than DD. It's a little bit more abbreviated and so DD Rescue should be t treated with the same reverence as DD because you can totally accidentally completely destroy your entire system with DD Rescue. So please, 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 if you're a novice and you're not super comfortable with everything that I'm talking about, don't do this. Uh, at least don't do this on a good machine. You know, haul out, you know, a, a system from the closet or something in mothballs and set up Linux on it. Uh, there's there's a bunch of utilities that you can download that are basically bootable ISOs. Uh, Parted Magic is one such distro. Parted Magic is a uh, distribution of Linux that has test disk and DD Rescue and some other utilities for looking for lost file systems, which we'll probably get into in a future video. It's they don't update it as often as as I would like the ISO. Uh, so in, ter in terms of the underlying technology that it's based on, it's maybe not as up to date as it could be. Test Disk and DD Rescue are also available from uh, the Ubuntu nightly um, CD image builds. They're available in uh, the, the desktop and server editions of the, the Ubuntu install ISOs the last time I checked. So you've got, you got options where you, you know, get at it. And so definitely booting off of USB or booting off of CD is a good situation to do with uh, running utilities like Test Disk and DD Rescue. You want to unplug any hard drives that have nothing to do with the bad situation. So if you have a hard drive that's failing, unplug all of your hard drives, but the hard drive that's failing. If your Linux box is your daily driver and you're doing this from your, your main desktop operating system, make sure that you understand which drive your main operating system runs off of, and that should never ever enter into any of the commands with DD or DD Rescue. Just keep that in mind. So one command you can run is fdisk-l to see all of the disks that are in your system, or you can do lsblk um, dash O name comma label comma size comma FS type comma model to give you a more abbreviated version of what is going on with your physically attached disks. Now one nice thing about LSBLK is that it's it's much easier to read than FDisk-L, but it doesn't have all the information that FDisk-L does. And the dash O specifies the columns that we want to see on the, on the output format. So that's kind of handy because you can sort of retool it to whatever you're looking for. It's important to understand that the devices that you see are the devices that are available to the system. And so if you see a device that has important information on it that you don't need to be part of whatever operation that you're doing, shut your system down and unplug it. It may sound like I'm paranoid, but <laughs> until you've accidentally done terrible, terrible things, <laughs> you won't have the healthy level of paranoia that I do. So please learn from my healthy paranoia. All right, so one DD rescue command we might run would be DD rescue dash D dash R one slash dev slash whatever device it is that we want to uh, read from, and then test.img, and then test.log file. 
Now I could specify slash dev slash SDB or slash dev slash SDC if I want to do a direct device to device copy. The first device to DD Rescue is the input device. The second parameter is the output. You can do the out, like if you're, if you've got a one terabyte disk that has problems, and your operating system drive is a three terabyte drive, or you're gonna store the image on a three terabyte drive, you don't, if you do a, a, a DD rescue from the one terabyte drive to the three terabyte drive, it's going to override everything on the three terabyte drive. The only thing that's gonna be on the three terabyte drive is a byte for byte copy of the one terabyte drive. If you already have a file system on the three terabyte drive, like you already have other stuff on it, and so you have 2.5 gigs of free space, you would want to mount that file system and use the image file instead of the device. And so I would just create a file called name of hard drive dot bin or name of hard drive dot raw. And so what that does, instead of copying device to device, it copies from the device that's failing the first parameter to this file. And this is, I mentioned earlier that the way that Linux works, you know, it's a block devices that a file, it's, it sort of blurs the lines. This is actually a really convenient way to work with stuff because if you're going from a smaller drive to a larger drive or a, lar a drive where you've got room to put that in more, you don't have to overwrite the whole drive that, you know, that three terabyte drive could hold three different drives that have failed depending on their size. If it's the one terabyte drive that I was talking about. Uh, or, or whatever like that. So it's a really convenient way to work on it. You can also use utilities to operate on that image file just like it was a local file. So you can do some command line magic and programs that are designed to operate on a block device as opposed to a file won't know the file's not a block device. If you need to mount the drive like as if it was a physical drive, you can use the mount command with dash O loop and it will use the loopback device to mount the file like as if it was a physical device. So it's really convenient to work with it in this kind of a way. If I'm speaking some sort of crazy foreign moon language, uh, just come over to the forums. You need, need to level up your, your Linux skills a little bit, but this, this video is already running a little long, so I don't want to get, I don't want to get too in the weeds. So what the parameters do is dash D tells DD rescue to use direct disk access. And what this does is it bypasses the Linux kernels um, cache in a situation where you've got a failing disk. The disk may tell the Linux kernel something wrong or, or say, I can't read it. And so the Linux kernel may say, oh, well, I'm going to cache this result. And so if you try to read it again later, it's like, oh, no, here's your bad data. But it doesn't actually ask the disk. And so it could be that if you ask the disk a second time, you may get the data. And so dash D tells DD rescue, don't go through the kernel IO operations, use direct IO operations on the disk in order to do the rescue. Dash R tells it how many times to retry. Now on the first clone, the first pass, if you are having a failing drive, I would suggest not specifying a large number of retries. We specified one retry, uh, three or four or five or 10 or 100. It's risky because if there's physical damage to the platter and you have the head sort of going over that, it's like having a hole in your sweater. It, the, hole, the hole in the sweater is bad, but then you start picking at the hole in your sweater and picking at the hole in your sweater, and all of a sudden you've got a giant hole in your sweater. And that's bad, <laughs> because that hole is your data, and you don't want to poke the badger. You don't want to make the hole larger. So uh, once you've got the full drive copied to an image or to another drive, then you can do another pass. This is an important differentiator between DD and DD Rescue. DD Rescue creates this log file. That's the last parameter on the command line. And this log file can be used to only reread the sectors, the parts of the disk that it had trouble reading. So once it's copied the whole thing, it's like, well, there was a hole here and I couldn't read it. You could run another DD rescue command to focus mainly on the hole. And how you tell it to mainly focus on the hole is the log file. And then if you read 10 times and the head explodes and the disk crashes, it doesn't matter because you weren't gonna get that data anyway. Um, so it's not as bad of a situation as it, uh, you know, as it would be if you just told DD Rescue to, you know, keep reading 20 times. If you'd read two thirds of the hard drive and it would hit the hole and then it would keep poking at the hole and then the read write heads would explode inside the drive, you're never going to be able to read that last third of the disk. And so that's a much worse situation. And so that's how that works. That's why you should think about it that way. If you've also got a hard drive that, that locks up or does something weird with the system, the log files are really important because when the system reboots, it'll basically pick up from where it left off as opposed to forcing you to start over again. So in that way, you know, even if the drive locks up or, or locks up the system or does something weird or goes offline, you can still resume the copy from where you left off. You just won't have, you know, whatever blocks it was on when it was copying the file. This is really handy. Now, if you want to mount the image file that you created, let's say that you went the image file route and you've created, you know, test.img or test.raw or whatever, 
One way that you can mount it is mount space dash O loop comma RO, which will mount it read only space and then your image file name and then space the directory directory where you want to mount it. So here we just created a directory called mount point and then we're just going to run the mount command and then it's going to mount our image or we're able to do operations on our image. With the drive mounted, you can browse the contents and everything's basically okay. Now there is a trick here. If you are creating an image of the entire drive as opposed to a single partition, and you try to mount it, it's not gonna work because the image contains multiple partitions and there's not an easy way to specify which partition you wanna mount. So in that situation, what you have to do is run parted, P-A-R-T-E-D, and look at the partitions in the file and determine the offset in the file that the partition starts. And so once you do that, you can run uh, you know, parted test.bin or test.raw or whatever, and then type unit, then it's gonna be B, and then print, and then print should give you a list of the partitions on the drive if that part of the drive is not damaged. So from this, you can see that there's several partitions here, and the first has this offset. And so what we're gonna do is mount dash O loop like we were gonna do before, comma offset equal that number, and then the image file, the raw file, the bin file, whatever you call the image from DD Rescue, and then the mount point folder, and then it'll mount. So that's kind of a neat trick. Now once you know how to work with the image file, and once you know how to work with the damaged disk, there are other utilities you can use from here in order to do basically surgery on the damaged drive. This is really important and sort of a beginning technique for data recovery and sort of a beginning technique for understanding what's going on uh, in, in the underbelly of how things are organized at the device level. So this is really, really just a high level overview, even though there's a lot of technical stuff here and even though this is really, there's, there's a fair bit of detail here, hopefully there's some new tricks you learned and that kind of thing. But this is pretty in-depth knowledge and, and hopefully you found it useful. So if you're gonna work on a project like this or you've learned something interesting or whatever, head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. I'd like to hear from you. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. Mm -hmm.